Hey guys, so today I am showing you how I am taking my navy blue doors and I am creating a faux wood grain. I showed you guys a short of that just to quickly show you what the end result was starting to look like. This is actually um, basically step one has been done, which is taking a base coat, which I used liquid wood for and um, painted it as a base coat. Liquid wood has 60% recycled fibers in it. So uh, it allows you to be able to set stain afterwards. Then the next thing I did to kind of create more texture in this was taking some chip brushes that little, little cheap brushes like this. And I had two different color of stains, a light one and a dark one. And I just created kind of some grain markings and stuff like that, not meant to be the finished product, but to be like the background layer of wood graining. So today I'm going to wood grain this and to kind of show you guys, it's hot out. I'm gonna to try to move quickly um, to show you what that technique looks like. So let's talk through what I'm using. Obviously paper towels, this gets messy. These are those super cheap things. You can get them from like Harbor Freight, the hardware store. They're just meant to be super cheap. And I've let these get hard, so they're not easy to do, but they make a lot of really good uh, irregular markings. Um, I have a slightly bigger one that I was using yesterday for dry brush to smooth out and gently push this was my flocking brush. I've got one coming in the mail, but basically you beat the door to create wood grain to mark off any areas. This with this and this are to create different variations in grain and cross grain. And these are the graining tools that I use and I'll show you how to do this. This is what I was using to apply so I'm using a glaze with two custom colors and I mixed those two together because I wanted something on the in-between of them too. So it's kind of a chocolatey color from yesterday, hard to see, but it's kind of like a super light chocolate. But this goes a long way so far, but I have more in case I need it to mix. So it's, the ratio is normally four to one. Um, I think I did like a tablespoon of this, a tablespoon of that, and then I kind of eyeballed it. And it seemed like it worked yesterday. So I wasn't too um, technical on the measurements, but so far so good. So we're gonna keep moving. I'm gonna move fast, like I said, because it's definitely hot out here. But this, and then you could also get, let me get a glass of water so that I have a way to wipe stuff down. All right. So I'm gonna do this panel first. Um, I would save the big long sections for last and kind of work in the same grains. That way it's easier to kind of move around it. But just to show you guys quickly what that kind of looks like. And see, this is where I didn't paint that doorknob yesterday. I didn't take it off. So I need to slap on some paint there too to make sure that looks all right. So get my grain areas where I want them and I did a lot of this yesterday without even taping it but I want to start somewhere. I want to start with a line somewhere and then I can go from there. Okay and then these are two separate grains. All right, so we'll start there, get it moving. All right, so again, liquid wood, then two separate stains to create this brushed effect. And I used these brushes for that. I just, and I smoothed it out the way I liked it. So now it's my base coat and get some stuff ready for this. This glass is gonna get redone, so I'm not worried about if it gets a little messy. All right. All right, 
So I didn't necessarily put a huge amount down yesterday. I kind of started with that and then later on I kind of finessed it to using a little bit less glaze. Um, whether that's right or wrong, that's just how I did it. But I kind of get my general situation happening here. Now, I wasn't very particular for this area because these are the same lines of grain. But if I was worried about that, I could simply take some water and I can wipe it off if I'm not ready to work with that yet. So once I get moving, I don't care if there's overlap, but that right now it's fine. It's going to dry kind of quick. So I want it not to be overly uh, messy. Okay. So now I have this, I'm going to first use my graining tools. So basically you take it and you rock it and you're going to see kind of a wood pattern and you can play with this because this has a working time on it. So I'm going to go like off center and then you just drag to how much you want to show and that kind of has that feel and then you have to wipe off the extra paint so that you can do it again. Now see this is kind of light. If I don't like that, all I have to do is come back through and I can redo it. So that's where you practice and you find what works best for you. So we'll go again. Try to do even pressure if you can. It's taken quite a lot up. So I can, I'll show you what I did yesterday where I added some different features. But for now, let's use him. I like this one for the grains for the side. Even pressure. Take the extra off. And now I can continue to finesse it. Wood is not, uh, is not perfect, so there's a lot of forgiveness here. And what I like to do, if it's too bright right there, I can pop just a little bit of that on, take one of these other brushes, kind of give me some movement, and then I can take this and scratch it in for more effect. The comb I was using for a cross grain. So just using this to gently mark in some crossing grain here. Very, very light pressure. Working kind of fast since it's a little drying faster than yesterday. I should probably be working in the shade, but once I do that, just using this to make abnormalities within the grain, but I'm staying within the same grain lines. And then to soften it down super gently, barely touching the frame here. This just gives a small blur to that area so that it's not super crisp. And then I just wipe everything down and that's my first panel. And then I can simply peel the tape up and keep working. So I'm going to do that to every panel now and I'm going to stop talking and you guys can just kind of watch me work.
So this is the final product of the glazing. I still have to put on some stain actually near the bottom of the door. You might see what looks like some splotching. That was me testing out some oil-based stain. I wasn't really fond of it, so I'm gonna change up the finish, but we've had quite a lot of rain, so I'm letting it dry and cure before I put on the true finished stain. Thanks guys, hope you enjoyed.